to another video. I decided to come out for a walk in the woods in the rain with the EM1X. And today I want to make a video about one of the features that this camera has. It's called the Live ND feature. This is a built-in mode the camera has that allows it to simulate the effects of a neutral density filter. So I want to make a little video evaluating this feature. I want to see how does it compare to a real ND filter. I'm going to shoot some side-by-side -side comparisons. I'm going to see if you can tell which was shot with which. And we're going to see if this feature is any good. And if it's any good, what it's good for, what it's not good for. And if we're really lucky, maybe we'll find some situations where this feature can do things that a regular neutral density filter can't. So uh, come along today. This ought to be fun and wet. So before I get started with evaluating how well this feature works, I want to talk a little bit about what a neutral density filter or an ND filter actually is, what it does, and how you can use it to change the look of your photography. Basically, a neutral density filter is just a fancy photography name for a dark piece of glass that you put over the front of your lens and it reduces the amount of light coming in to your sensor. And you think to yourself, why would I want to reduce the amount of light coming into my sensor? Well, you do it so that you can leave your shutter open longer for various reasons. The main reason is because you want to induce some motion blur into your images. You want to leave your shutter open longer so you can blur out the motion of water or the motion of people or maybe fireworks or vehicles. A lot of different things you can do with a neutral density filter. These filters are sold by their density or by their strength or by how much light they reduce coming through the lens. And you'll usually see this referred to as the number of stops of light that they reduce. So you might see a one stop filter. That means it's gonna cut the amount of light coming into your camera down by half. A two stop filter means it's gonna cut the amount of light coming in by four. A three stop filter cuts it down by eight times. A four stop by 16, a five stop by 32, and so on and so forth. So once you've chosen your neutral density filters and you've gone out to photograph a scene, you need to do a few things. You need to meter the scene correctly and then figure out how many extra stops of motion blur you would like in the image. And sometimes this takes a little bit of guesswork and experimentation, which made these really challenging to use uh, back in the days of film. With digital, it's a little bit easier. And it's gotten even easier now that some cameras have a built-in live ND mode. So A, you don't need to carry these filters, and so it's one less thing you need to buy. It's one less thing you need to carry. And also, as I'm going to show you, it makes metering for a scene and choosing the amount of uh, strength really, really easy. So I'm out here in Sanborn Park trying to find some running water, because running water is one of those things that is really useful for demonstrating how a neutral density filter works. And so I want to shoot a series of test shots with both the live ND mode on the camera and with an actual variable neutral density filter. And I want to see if you can tell the difference. So this ought to be really interesting. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is to turn on the live ND mode in your camera. Now you could go into the menu and do this each time you want to use the feature, but I find the better way to do it is to customize a button on the back of the camera to select that mode. So you go into the menu option, go into your gears. On the EM1X, it's the B1 menu and you hit button function. And I have selected the function button, this one right here, to be my live ND. So now whenever I want the live ND mode, I just press that button and you will see the little Live ND logo pop up. I can press the button again and toggle it off. So now whenever I want to use that mode, I have it right there literally at the press of a button. And here's another cool thing. You press that button and hold it, and then you turn the front dial, 
And as I'm turning the front dial with my index finger, you can see down here, I can select between all of the different live ND settings, ND2, ND4, ND8, ND16, and ND32, which corresponds to five, four, three, two, or one stops of neutral density. So now that we've got that set up, let's go find a composition and shoot some comparison images. So I found a composition that I like here. I've got my camera set up on a tripod and the way I'm metering this scene, if I was just going to take a regular still photo, I have ISO 200 F4 at 1 40th of a second. You can see that's a little underexposed, but I want this to be kind of moody. So if I take that image, it looks like this. I know this image is metered the way I want. I know it's not overexposed, it's not underexposed, but I want a little more motion blur. So now all I have to do is hold down that function button and turn my dial. My live ND menu comes up. I'm gonna select ND2 and when I release this button, you're going to see a little bit of blur simulated here on the waterfall. I'm gonna go ahead and take that image and the camera's going to basically take a few images and simulate in the camera the effect of leaving my shutter speed open. You can see here, I use the ND2 setting. My shutter speed has been doubled. So now let's do it again. Let's go to ND4. So again, we're now at a quarter of the shutter speed we had originally. You can see a little more motion blur in the image. We'll take that image. And then go one more time, ND8. This is three stops. We're down to a fifth of a second now. We'll take that image. ND16, or down to a 2.5 of a second. Four stops of reduction. You can see a lot of motion blur now in the water. We'll take that image. And then the last one, ND32, five stops of light coming in. You can see a lot of nice, attractive blur here. Focus and we'll take that image. Now I'm going to thread on a variable neutral density filter. This filter, as I turn it, it's going to give me anywhere from two to five stops of reduction, exactly the same as the live ND feature in the camera. I'm now going to take the exact same sequence of images at the exact same shutter speeds we saw in the live ND clips, and now I'm gonna put each one of these frames on the screen side by side and you tell me which one you think is which. For this comparison, I just loaded the raw images into Lightroom and then exported the JPEGs after cropping. I've done no other modification because I just wanted you to see the difference in smoothness of the water between live ND and a real ND filter. I see a little more smoothness in the real ND filter versus live ND at the higher ND settings at ND16 and ND32, uh, I would probably go with a real filter over a live ND, but at the lower settings, they're almost indistinguishable to my eye. So who is this mode really for? I mean, if you already have neutral density filters, do you really need this mode? No, you don't. But now that I have it, I've found a few situations that I really like using it. And the first of those is when I'm doing travel photography and I wanna move fast and I wanna travel light, I don't wanna carry as much stuff with me. Uh, it's not that uh, filters are bulky necessarily, but they are time consuming. I have to look at my scene, I have to meter my scene, I have to figure out how much shutter speed I think I want. Then I gotta thread on a filter, I gotta take that image, I gotta evaluate that image, and if I don't like it, I gotta try a different filter and move on. Even with a variable neutral density filter, that takes time. Whereas with Live ND, the ability to preview the image before you take it, I think is the strongest feature of this mode. Another thing that I realized is I have a lens that I cannot put filters on. I have the eight millimeter F1.8 fisheye and that lens has a round bulbous front and no filter threads. So if I want to do long exposures that would require a filter, now I can with that lens. That really excites me. Also, I do a lot of seascapes and uh, waterfall photography where I need both a neutral density filter and a circular polarizing filter. And if I have both of those filters on the front of the lens, it might degrade your image quality. It's also a bit of a pain to muck around with two filters. So now I can put the circular polarizer on the front of the lens and use Live ND for my shutter speed. So again, I think that is really a useful feature 
to have. And Live ND is generally conducive to my run and gun, quick and dirty, lazy style of photography, especially when I'm traveling. So if you have this mode on your camera and you use it and you like it, drop me a comment down below and tell me what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what types of scenes you use it for, what types of scenes maybe it doesn't work for, because I wanna make more videos like this and continue to explore some of the possibilities that are being unlocked by some of the new modes that cameras like the EM1X have. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and please join me again for the next video, which should be coming your way in about a week. See ya.